we're talking about a serious story now which is causing increasing concern for young women. Yeah, police are currently dealing with a wave of reports of spikings by injections at nightclubs and parties. Uh, it's something our next guest, Zara Owen, sadly experienced firsthand after visiting a Nottingham nightclub with some friends a couple of weeks ago. Zara said she blacked out and then she woke up in bed with no memory but a needle mark on her leg. Now, Zara is one of many who have been reported, who have reported similar incidents since to the Nottinghamshire police. And she joins us now to tell us a little bit more. Good morning, morning Zara. Zara. Thank you so so much for joining us. Hi, uh, good morning. Let's let's talk this through. So you actually went to and you went out on a night out with your friends. So tell us what are your recollections of that night? Exactly what happened? So it was last Monday night, uh, and we, some of my friends were going to tell. And I remember going into the said club, and the security was tight, quite tight. We went through metal detectors. I had my pockets emptied, and my friend who had her bag with her had her bag in searched and then after that I remember going to the bar to the toilets and going to the photo booth all with my friends as we would you know at the very beginning it was in maybe the first 15 20 minutes of the night and then my memory blanks until I'm at home and I'm reaching for my ch phone charger between those two points I have no memory of anything so when you woke up this is the next thing you remember is waking up in your house and with, with a mark on your leg, is that right? Yeah, so I woke up and obviously I had no memory and it kind of confused me a bit because that doesn't happen to me with, with whatever, how much I drink. I just always remember things and I found it a bit odd but then I did actually find a pinprick in my leg because I did actually have a shooting pain there and I didn't know what it was until I felt where the, always the epicentre of pain was and to my dismay and disgust there was a pinprick on my leg. So did you feel like tender around that area as well? It wasn't tender as such, it was more a sharp agonising pain. I couldn't stand, I was walking with a massive limp and I had to, I was walking around my house clinging onto like the banister and everything just to give me some support. So you think then you were spiked with a needle. Mm -hmm. I guess yeah. the first question is, what, what did you do then? And secondly, did you, like, do you know why? Uh, so I decided to go to the hospital that night because the, the, on the Tuesday because I wanted to at least get a blood test or a drug test or even someone to examine my leg to see what had happened because I had heard of these spiking incidents through social media and through the word of mouth because... As a student, you hear of these things, and my age demographic on my social media is of my age range. So obviously, I was aware of these cases. And so it was a shocking discovery to find, and I was like, I don't want it to be seen that it's me, but I did end up find, figuring out that it actually was, you know, I did get spiked by this injection. So my mind was a bit uh, like everywhere. But so obviously, I went to the hospital and then. I was there for eight hours and all I had was a triage and a background check given to me where they asked about uh, medical history and everything. But other than that, I didn't get treated to. I guess that's hard though, isn't it? Because like we've all been to A&E um, yeah. we, and we all know if we go to A&E with something, you, you know, if you go to A&E with something that doesn't look particularly serious at that given time, someone more serious uh, in triage will come in and, and you know, and they'll, they'll take your place in the queue. Yeah. I think we've all been through that experience. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, um, look, Sorry, yeah, go like, on. I'm, no, I was just about to say that I, like, I'm not, not lucky the fact that it was busy. Like, it was a busy thing, but I yeah. felt because I was visually looked fine and I didn't react that adversely, I felt like it wasn't a priority almost, which yeah. always it wasn't, but it just, you know, it just, I don't know, it made me feel a bit underwhelmed always. I'm no. Not, oh, OK. okay. Can I just uh, ask you, Zara, I mean, how is this making you feel now? I mean, will you still go out? I mean, has this stopped you from going out at all? How are you feeling about... Just going out with your friends now? It actually hasn't stopped me going out because my life, my, my attitude was that, like, I don't want to live on eggshells all my life, OK? I want to go out and enjoy myself and not let these people who are doing such horrible things win, in effect. Like, I do take my procedures if I normally go out, like, you know, I'll cover my glasses, I'll put my thumb in my bottle, as we are, you know, we're brought up, like, to, to do, so we don't, you know, get this spiky happenings but so it's just more of the case that I want to go and enjoy myself I'm you're here once you're young once I want to enjoy myself but obviously I'm going to be a lot more careful and you know take care of my surroundings a lot more 
if I'm going out with my friends, and as well my friends, they will do the same thing as well, just to make sure that we're all okay, we're all our normal self, almost, if if I put it like that. Definitely. Like, I mean, it shouldn't be up to you to have to change your behaviour, should it's it? It's just bizarre. So, I, yeah, no. just one more question, because we, 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 you know, we need to bring Helena in we, we, um, in just a second, but you're going to take part in a girls' night, uh, night in boycott mm -hmm. for the clubs in Nottingham. Yeah. Explain what that is and what you'd like to... What you would like to see the clubs do, because obviously, for the, for the clubs' point of view, it, it's quite difficult to please everyone, isn't it? So, what would you like to? What, what change would you like to see, and how can you see that they can enact that change? So, the girls' lights in is coming from the term "girls' lights out," and it's basically girls and obviously guys can do this as well. Are going to boycott the clubs because they feel that they're not safe or something, and they want to seek always change and reform in their their industry almost, and to keep people say for but it's like what I would love to see when I go to clubs now is you know stricter bag searches or even a bag search like I've gone into a club before and I haven't had my bag searched but by that I mean literally the whole pockets like some people have gone in and they've just they've missed like the little compartments or like I don't know maybe like a detector or something where they like tell you to empty your pockets or something just so if anything is trying to be taken in, gets stopped at the scene and then it can be taken out so to prevent any of these casualties and like Ill, really bad illnesses from it. OK, well, thank we do need to do a right of reply uh, from Nottingham University Hospital. Uh, they've told us we're sorry that Zara was asked to wait some time to see one of our nurses. Unfortunately, our A&E was very busy at the time and we have to prioritise those most in need of urgent care. Uh, Zara, thank you for joining us. Um, to discuss the scale of this issue now, we're joined by the CEO of Al the Alcohol Education Trust, uh, Helena Conibert. Morning, Helena. Morning. Thanks for joining us. So, unfortunately, this isn't a rare case, is it? It's, the, the spiking seems to be kind of becoming more common. No, it's not. I mean, in the 11 years that we've been working with um, young people across the UK, uh, drink spiking has always been a problem. Um, our main issue is that it's not reported enough. So in response to um, the recent uh, spike in spiking, if you like, and, and the media, we have just conducted a snap poll. And over just a few days, 750 16 to 25 year olds uh, responded. And we found that 15% or one in eight young women had experienced being spiking um, and one in 12 young men and one in eight uh, non-binary people. So that is a shocking statistic. And it's also been backed up by uh, an Instagram survey of 23,000 students by TAB. And they found that 11% of students this term had experienced spiking. And the stat I read as well, Helen, there was 92%, I don't know whether the provinces, is, but it might be one of your studies, 92% don't report it. That's right. And this is, this is the real issue. And there's a, a mixture of reasons, um, either because of blackout, uh, people can't remember exactly what happened, or they don't realise that they were spiked until the next day. They're worried that they won't be believed. They're embarrassed. Um, and where, uh, and it was our, our study, where people did report it, in 50% of cases, nothing happened as a result. So what would you like to see change and, 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 and you know, what, what are you calling for? Well, I think uh, the high profile of spiking uh, is, is really helping. Um, nightlife economy, they have really got to um, make people feel safe and confident that, A, if somebody believes their drink has been spiked, that they will look through the CCTV footage, that they will report it to the police, that they will conduct um, searches as... People come into the club, so well-trained bar staff, well-trained door staff. But what I did also want to say is, with our survey, uh, the highest prevalence of spiking was actually at private parties. 35% of spiking cases Jeez. was at private parties, followed by nightclubs, oh and then by bars, and then by festivals. So we have to be vigilant everywhere, and that's a really sad message to have to give. But in a lot of cases of spiking, um, there's no further motive apart from the spiking. So we've got to really do something about the perpetrators and say, you know, this is totally unacceptable. What do you think you're doing? Yeah. Yeah. You know, in some cases we have psychosis. In the very worst cases we have death. But it's so traumatic. And, you know, Zara's been very 
uh, brave in telling her story and, and injecting is a new phenomenon. And obviously, you know, it's really important to stress it's none of this is, is the victim's fault. But the, another stat that, that came up was the fact that it's only 70, 77% of alcoholic drinks that are spiked. So 23% of non-alcoholic drinks are spiked. So it's nothing to do with, with drink, really. No, that's the whole thing. I mean, our sort of mantra, if you like, is it can be any drink in any place and it can happen to any person. Um, it's, you know, it, it, it is, uh, you know, at the moment it's an epidemic, you know, uh, and we've got to start doing something about it. And everybody has to feel confident that if they go to the police or if they go to hospital or if they go to their GP, they are going to be taken seriously and a blood and urine test will be taken because unless people are the perpetrators are prosecuted and taken to task, then, you know, we're not going to be able to do something to reduce this huge problem. Thank you so much. We should just say, first of all, Nottingham Police have said, I would like to reassure people we are working incredibly hard to investigate these reports and are placing a lot of resources into these inquiries and also have a dedicated team of detectives working on any reports made to us. So thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Helena. Helena Thanks, Sarah. And Sarah.